Meliager, executed quietly in 323 BCE. A long-serving infantry officer whose career probably began under Philip II, Meliager seems to have served under Alexander in command of one of the units of the phalanx in all of his major battles and campaigns. Our sources don't mention him enough for this to be a certainty, but it is pretty likely. When Philip II was assassinated, Meliager accompanied Alexander on his Danube campaign against the Getai in 335. He is also known to have been present at the Granicus in 334, and to have been one of the officers sent to escort the newly wed Macedonian troops who rejoined Alexander at Gordium in 333. In the same capacity as the leader of Ataxus, he helped cross the Hydaspes and he also fought in India. Though he began the invasion of the Persian Empire at the same rank as many of the other men featured in this series, he was virtually alone among the initial phalanx commanders in that he was never promoted to an elite unit, the cavalry, or an independent command of any kind. Rom believes that Meliagra's career died when he jeered at Alexander for giving a thousand talents to a local Indian ruler. But if he had not been promoted by that point, I have to think that Alexander had no intention of promoting him beyond his current station. When Alexander died in Babylon, there was a succession crisis. Alexander had not left an adult heir. His only two known offspring were Heracles, his son by a Persian wife, and the yet unborn child of the Bactrian princess Roxanne. Perdiccas called a commander's conference at which Meliager and Attalus proposed that Alexander's mentally retarded half-brother Aridias should be elevated to the throne. Their proposal was shot down, but Meliager made a play to the pro-Aegead infantrymen, who were more dedicated to the royal bloodline of Philip and Alexander than to the ambitious generals like Perdiccas. Meliager won over the almost total support of the infantry, who in an army assembly declared Aridias king as Philip III, with Meliager and Attalus as his guardians. Perdiccas and Leonatus led out the cavalry and elephants and used their superior mobility to lay siege to Babylon. This mutiny shows that there was a class division among the leaders of the Macedonian army. The cavalry, then as later, were aristocratic, while most of the phalanx were composed of men who had been peasant farmers in Macedon. We can see not only that the common Macedonian wanted to support the continuance of Aegean rule, but that there was a constitutional question involved. Scholars today are not entirely clear on what powers the Macedonian army assembly possessed, but it is generally thought that the assembly was limited to being able to approve or reject proposals by the king and to acclaim or reject new rulers. Since Macedonian aristocrats hated democracy and had gone to great lengths to suppress it in the Greek mainland, they would have seen Meliager as a demagogue of sorts and as someone who was undermining their institutional power base in order to enhance his own. As hunger set in and tempers calmed, Meliager agreed to a deal where he would be Perdiccas's chief deputy and Philip III would share the throne with Roxanne's unborn child, provided that this child turned out to be a boy. However, most likely for the reasons I propose above, this deal was deceitful. Perdiccas first drove a wedge between Meliager and his ally Attalus by marrying off his daughter to Attalus. Next, at a field assembly of the entire army outside of Babylon, Perdiccas had 300 known mutineers caught out of the ranks and trampled to death by elephants, thus depriving Meliager of known allies and intimidating the rest of the infantry from further disobedience. Shortly after this, Meliager fled to a temple for sanctuary, but he was still put to death. Meliager is a hard character to assess. Mary Renault in Funeral Games makes him into a simple-minded opportunist who uses demagoguery to achieve his means and who is easily outsmarted by his more capable antagonist like Perdiccas. In the absence of stronger evidence, we probably don't want to make him into a hero for increasing the rights of representational government. However, we should keep in mind that almost all leaders of a popular bent who are not named Pericles tend to be unjustly attacked by the sources who tend to be anti-democratic aristocrats. Though Meliager's gambit failed miserably, his decision to elevate Philip III and the subsequent inter-Macedonian bloodshed left an indelible mark on the politics of the next few decades and helped to set some of the initial lines of division among Alexander's successors.